Thank you. It's uh, great to be here in Helsinki. So this, uh, this presentation here is actually one which was initially meant to sort of be against the investors. But you know, given the fact that, that so many investors are ha having such a hard time with games and how to invest in games, I think this is probably the one place in the world where we have a lot of knowledgeable games investors. So I think I'll, I'm, I'm pushing this one a little bit more towards the developers and, and those of you getting ready to leave Rovio, getting ready to leave Supercell, getting ready to leave King and go create the next venture. So very quickly, my own background, I used to be an entrepreneur um, until 99, uh, sorry, from 99 to 2010. Uh, the last company sold that to, uh, to Apple, and then I decided to get out of the operational role and join Sunstone. We're an early stage fund out of Copenhagen, investing in Central and uh, Northern Europe. Personally, I do two things. One is open source developer software. So think databases, think uh, software defined storage. And the other is gaming, where um, my first engagement, personal engagement, was uh, Mojang, advisor to Mojang. Here in Finland, uh, invested in seriously together with Steven, who was on, on uh, stage a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Ministry of Games, uh, another great startup, and finally Traplight up in uh, Tampere. So, you know, this has really been the perception from investors for a long time about what it means to invest in gaming, right? You know, you, this is Hitman. It came out of a Danish studio called IO Interactive uh, back in the late 90s. And, you know, 50% of revenue for a game like that comes in the first weekend. It's really box office weekend. And that's the type of investment which many VCs have a very hard time with. They don't, you know, you pile in first, you know, 2 million for a pilot, then, uh, 10 million for pre-production, and then 100 million euros for, for full-on uh, production. And it's, it's the Hollywood type of, of investment and Hollywood type of returns that don't really go well with VC and, and how we're thinking. So my argument is that investors are vastly undervaluing gaming investments today. If we look at, at, at something which is obviously present for everybody here in, in, uh, in Helsinki, it's, it's the SoftBank acquisition of Supercell. The, the numbers here are rough estimates. Um, Ilka would probably come after me and, and tell me that they're a little bit higher. But, so I've, I've been a bit conservative. Uh, but what we still do see is that we see ridiculously low price earnings, which is what you know, typically a, 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 uh, an investor on Wall Street would be, be looking for in a gaming company. And, you know, while this is, so, so, so you could say for a company like SoftBank, this is an incredibly uh, good investment compared to where they are themselves. SoftBank trades at, 18 point, at, a, at a price earning of 18.2 on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, and they bought Supercell for a price earning of about 8.5. So are they good merchants, or is everybody else really devaluing the, the value of, of, uh, of gaming? That is, my that is my perception, and I think the reason why is that, that people are still perceiving that it's this hit-driven uh, type of, of business. But that's about to change. You know, when we look at, when we look at the, the current market, the 10 billion is the revenue of the Apple App Store last year. That was 100% gain of the year before, which was 100% gain of the year before that. We don't really know when it's going to top out, but given the fact that, that Apple still has so much potential growth in emerging uh, economies, we're, we're probably quite a far uh, from, uh, from reaching the, uh, the very top. Maybe growth will show, slow down a little bit, but the opportunity is, is still there. So when we look, at, when we look at, at how these games are performing compared to, to previously, we're seeing a much, much longer half-life. You know. Clash launched here in the summer of 2012, and they're still top performing 36 or 30 some odd months later. So, the, the, so the, 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 the normal perception of the half-life of you know, every single weekend is gonna chop off 
half of your revenues simply doesn't hold true any longer. Even another earlier darling, Angry Birds, the half-life from peak is going to be somewhere 30, 36 months, even in a market which, which, which slows down. So the, the, the argument that this is a hits-driven business doesn't really hold true anymore. But, but while a company like Supercell, sorry, like a company like Rovio could be acquired by a company like Disney, Supercell didn't really have the type of intrinsic emotional value. The, the lack of, uh, of strong IP, the lack of a strong backstory, the fact that we're, we suddenly have, you know, we have a barbarian, and then we have 12 barbarians. He doesn't have a name. In heyday, we have the old lady. We have the newspaper boy. Uh, we have the uh, logger. None of them have names. None of them have a backstory. We don't know where they came from. And, uh, and our kids are not going to pick them up as, as plushies. So, so I think you know, my, you know, it's very hard to criticize a company like Supercell. But if there's one thing, and I think the reason why they were only sold at the price that they actually were sold at, is because there is the lack of strong IP to work with from there. So everybody probably remembers who, who, uh, who installed Flappy. Well, it's, it's, it's fewer than I thought. And who are still playing it? Exactly. So Flappy for me is about what this guy was to YouTube, what is it, two years ago? Um, and so the longevity of the IP, we're still at the extremely early phases of, uh, of an industry where we're starting to create enormous uh, value, not just from the clicks, not just from the in-app purchases, not just from the advertising, not just from the premium titles, but really uh, over, over the much, much longer term. If I take actually what I think is a very, very good example of some of the things that we're starting, or at least the value which is starting to be created on, on mobile, and where we're starting to see some digital franchises appear is Angry Birds Transformers. So I think Angry Birds Transformers was launched about, was it two months ago, something like that. My eight-year-old kid downloads it. He starts playing half an hour. I, sit, I see him put down his iPad. He runs upstairs, finds in his pile of toys the two Transformers that he has that he hasn't played, for, played with for, for three or four years. You know, next day, logs on to Netflix. Watch, starts watching all of the original Transformers series, and all of this simply based on, on, uh, on downloading a game. So I don't know what the deal looked like for Rovio with Transformers, but I certainly hope, and I think that they are going to be in a position, I think other companies are going to be in a position where they can either activate or reactivate existing IP from the worlds that we're, we're used to leading this, which, is, which are the toys and which are especially TV. So my eight-year-old didn't pick this up on TV. He didn't pick this up in the schoolyard. He picked it up on his iPad. So we're starting to see a couple of companies who really are having the ambitions of, of, uh, of being the next uh, Pixar's. And I think, um, I think you know, one company which was sort of born out of the, the Rovio tradition uh, seriously here in, in, uh, in Helsinki with Best Fiends, which launched uh, a, about a month and a half ago. There we're seeing strong characters, strong backstory, being ready to be pulled into other uh, media. You go onto their, their Facebook page. If you look at the emails that, that, uh, that they get, uh, even the emails I get as a periphery uh, uh, involvement in that, it's like, my daughter fell in love with this character. When can I get the plushies? When, when, are, when, are, the TV, sorry, when are the TV series coming out? When are the cartoons here and so forth? And I think the opportunity, I mean, Pixar was a transformation of, of, of really the next level of animation. I think leading from there, we can really see some of the next, uh, some of the next Disney's uh, uh, be created. Another good example, you know, Miguel Francisco at Seriously, is he going to be the, the next Walt Disney? Are we going to be able to see, or, or if we see the studios here in Finland, if we see them elsewhere in Europe, 
uh, if we see the king starting to, to reposition themselves in a way where they, can, they, they don't just look at game mechanics, they don't just look at how well they can monetize, but also the emotional connection that they can create with the player, um, with, the, with the families playing, and, and, uh, and, and really from there on. So my encouragement to, and I think it goes, it goes very wide, my encouragement to, to those of you who are game developers or thinking about going out and creating your studios or, or maybe even are in, in, in some of the large studios today is to think a lot more about this because it's, it's something which matters. It's something where this story is suddenly one that we as investors understand and where we understand that we're not just, um, we're not just funding the, the, next, uh, uh, the, the next production. We're not just funding the next user that you're going to acquire through an every play uh, or, or some other ad network. And, but, but, we're, but you're in there, you're creating intrinsic value. You're creating value where even the first, uh, the, the first title you build, if it's, if it's a medium hit, you have something to build on for the next title. And, uh, and I, I think there's, there's lots of opportunity. We've also proven here in, in the Nordics and all of Europe that, that this is something we can do. So let's splice these two things and, and see what we can uh, get out of it. I think those were uh, my 12 minutes. Um, create, ca create more value than you capture. Uh, I think that's really part of, the, of, of what's happening here at, uh, at Slush. Uh, I love being here. In, and uh, suddenly being, sitting in the, in the chair out there and being told I shouldn't just be investing in, in games and open source, but I should be investing in, uh, in Spaceport Sweden with uh, Karen, the CEO, sitting out there. I hope you'll stick around for her coming up at uh, 4 o'clock on this stage or one of the others. That's maybe the, the, the next even more exciting uh, thing which we could, uh, could drive here from Scandinavia. So thank you.